Ever since I have discovered touch typing and then Vim and then the whole world of ergonomic keyboards and alternative keyboard layouts, the way I interact with the computer has changed dramatically. So this is what my current keyboard layout looks like. Uh, it's non-QWERTY, it has several extra layers. In this video, I'm just gonna quickly run through some of the aspects of how this is better than most of what I saw people use. Before we dive in, let me say a few words about the hardware. I've tried a few ergonomic keyboards and I didn't really like the missing portability aspect of it. So I wanna be able to always, you know, when I'm in the airport or in a coffee shop to quickly grab my PC and start working on it without worrying about the, you know, picking the ergonomic keyboard from it. What I'm using instead is my normal uh, keyboard from my laptop. It has very narrow space bar, which allows to allocate my thumbs in between the space bar and the alt button from both sides. And uh, the alt buttons are of course remapped to blue and red layers. And if you are not familiar with the concept of layers, let me quickly explain you what it means. So let's say I'm typing something somewhere, let's say in the omnibar, and I wanna press this button, which says A, so I'm pressing A, and all it does, it adds the letter A to here, okay, to whatever field I'm typing at. But if I hold the blue button with my thumb and I'm pressing the same, the same letter, it doesn't add the letter A anymore, it executes this action, which is marked blue, which is left arrow. So I'm doing this and my cursor moves left. I can also move it right, up or down if I want, home and holding shift and so on. And if I hold the red layer, if I hold this button with my thumb and I press the same button, it executes this action, which is the parenthesis. So I can type parenthesis like that without the need to reach for the number layer, which is just way too far. Uh, so I can basically type all the symbols without reaching for the number layers, or I can do all this action like uh, backspace just by holding the blue button and pressing here. You know, the backspace, the delete, uh, I don't know, search, whatever, switching tabs, and so forth. So this is what layers are. Just a convenient way to reach all of the functionality of a keyboard, such as symbols or actions, without reaching for the you know, buttons that are extra far from the home row. Quick note regarding the layout itself. As you see, it's not QWERTY. It has the most popular letters on the home row. The one I chose was Halmok. You can watch the video, I'll leave the link in the description, but basically anything would be better than QWERTY because QWERTY is the worst layout. It is actually not exactly Halmok because some of the symbols are off. For example, the dash I decided to just allocate here and uh, the semicolon is not here. It's actually on my red layer, just any other symbol. Because this button, I believe, is so <laughs> it's so far from the home row, I never actually reach for it. And so no letter or no symbol is assigned. And if I press this button on my omnibar, there's just a smiley face. One other very important thing to mention is that I almost don't use my mouse when I'm at the computer. That's because most of the things are done with the keyboard uh, using the blue layer here. For example, switching between the tabs or pressing enter where you don't even have to move your fingers to press enter. Uh, and also the VMC plugin over there, I'm now using my mouse obviously for the demonstration purposes. So the, the you see where the cursor is. What VMC allows you to do is it allows you to do most of the things that you would like to do in a browser, like scrolling the window or going to the very end or to the very beginning or focusing on the input field. For example, now I don't have my cursor focused on the, on the input field. And so I can do this just pressing my button. I can press escape. I can scroll somewhere and I can focus again and type something else. Okay, all of that without like moving my fingers at all. Blue plus this letter assigned or blue plus this letter assigned to switching type to the left or to the right. So I can go left and right, left and right, and I can close the tab using blue plus that button and I can restore the tab by doing the same key combination but holding shift. I don't use control button too because control is so far like in the corner, it's very inconvenient to reach with your, with your pinky when you can just use the blue button that you can reach with your with your thumb for every action that you can think of. I can do control V or I can do control C without actually pressing the control button. I'm just holding the blue one and then using these three buttons and also that one to select all the text. Then you have your arrow keys that you can use without reaching for that arrows, standard arrows that are again very far in the corner of the keyboard. I know that the default allocation of the arrows are a little shifted to the left, but in my opinion, that's so illogical because you have four fingers uh, allocated on the home row of your keyboard and you have four letters here. So, you know, makes sense. Um, just as a demonstration, I can move left and right. Uh, let me open the Vim and type something. Okay, just quickly a lot of text. And so I can move the cursor left and right, up and down without needing to reach for the for the arrow buttons here. Uh, same for the home, 
and page up and page down. Okay, just quickly before I forget. If you hold the blue and then press this, it would be the arrow, so it moves the cursor to the left. But if you hold the shift at the same time, it would select the text along the way. And so you can do the same by pressing the home. So you select everything from the cursor position to home or to end, or you can go to end and select that. Control X, I don't know, open new tab, this, and press enter without moving your fingers. All right, let, let's just uh, start from the beginning, uh, from the top left corner, and then go from here. Um, starting with the blue layer and then I'll talk about the red layer and other concepts as well. So blue plus that will open a flame shot and you can quickly do a screenshot, control C, of course using that plus C and uh, dismiss the uh, notification using blue plus that button. So whenever you have like a notification you can dismiss it by pressing this combination. This is the sound control, so mute and then make it quieter, make it louder or just you know pause the pause the song or uh, continue to play the song and actually if you can see that in gray i have here some text under the buttons and that means this is the function that uh, gets activated when you hold both blue and red button for example if you hold blue plus three it would pause the song if you hold blue plus red plus three it would stop the song or if you hold both of these buttons with your thumbs of course then you can switch to previous song or next song. Okay, moving on, blue plus tab would move to the IDE. So you see I have the workspaces there. I don't use mouse to switch between them. You know, instead of pressing Alt plus tab unpredictable amount of times, you switch directly to the target workspace. For example, blue plus this would always switch to browser. So whatever is your current workspace, pressing blue plus H would move you to the browser all the time, no matter how many like windows, if you speak in it, in terms of windows, no matter how many windows are in between your current workspace and the browser. I don't use windows, of course, I use, uh, what's that called? Tiling window manager is when you have a window and then if you want to open another window, for example, the terminal, you can type something there. You don't have like the windows overlap. You can always see both of the windows or all of the windows. You can open however much you want or close them or rearrange them or resize them using your keyboard, of course. And you never have like this overlapping nasty thing when you don't know how many windows are in between, for example, your IDE and your browser. You can always switch between them directly. So speaking of switching to different uh, windows, blue plus H would always switch to browser. And if you are already in the browser layout, then pressing the same combination would open a new tab. So that's very convenient. When I, when I wanna open the new tab from, for example, IDE, I want to search for a translation for a certain word. I would just press it twice um, I don't know, enter some text, translate it, and that's it. Pressing blue plus tab would lead you to the IDE layout, and if you are already there, pressing the same combination would suggest you to open a new one. Moving on, blue plus this button, which I pressed with my pinky, would give me this magnifying glass, which is redirects to control F. So whenever I want to you know, find something in a page, I press this combination, or whenever I want to access some functionality of a different program, which uh, requires you to press control F, Instead of Control F, I just all the time press blue plus this thing. It just redirects. Um, same for this thing. It works not only with the browser, but also let's say I am opening a bunch of tabs on my file manager. So if I can press blue plus tab left, tab right, or tab close in the browser, I can also do the same thing here in the file explorer and in the IDE as well. So switch between tabs like that, close the tab, reopen the tab, works every time in all of the programs that support the concept of tabs. The way you achieve this largely depends on your operating system. For me, I'm a Linux user, I use just XKB. And uh, if you want to know how to achieve this in, in Windows, you can pretty much Google for any, you know, window, how to remap a key or something like that. I'm sure programs exist. So moving on, um, we have home and then page up and and then this button, which you know has this reload icon, it remaps to simply control R. So if I press blue plus this button, it would just reload the page because it redirects to control R. So EOF, which stays for end of file, it just remaps to control D. So for example, if I am in the terminal and I press that combination, that will send the control D uh, to my terminal. This one redirects to control N. So whenever I want to, let's say, uh, I don't know what does control N stay for, uh, opening a new, new window in a browser, 
But uh, in the file manager, if I press that, it will create uh, a new folder. So control N. This button is a quick input button. So I have a list of quick inputs that I want to sometimes enter in the forms of some website, for example, my name or my phone number or my address. So what I can do instead, for example, I want to enter my Monero uh, wallet. I can, of course, go to my uh, account and copy number from that, or I can open the quick input, type Monero, and it will just input like that. Or I can go for uh, my, my name. Actually, for the strings that I input most often, I assign special key combinations. For example, uh, Alt plus Shift plus, I don't know, 2 would uh, input my, my email, like that. Or the R button would input my name or my phone number or whatever you want. That's just the key bindings that anyone can do. And it's just a little trick to avoid the inputting the data manually. If you can just assign most most often data that you input. Moving on, button here is the delete button. And uh, if you hold both of these buttons, it acts like control plus plus delete. So also control plus um, plus backspace or control plus. So you can control plus to zoom in or zoom out. Of course, you could have zoom in or zoom out using the control plus this plus button. I mean, how are you, how are you even supposed to like press these buttons? You hold the control button with your pinky and the plus button with the other pinky. <laughs> this one, so your blue plus red plus that would enable the caps lock. The caps lock, of course, is swapped with escape because, you know, how many times do you press escape uh, during the day? And how many times do you press the caps lock? Let's move on. Blue plus N would move you to a previous workspace. So you press blue plus N and you switch between this workspace and your most recent uh, workspace. I believe this is something that Alt plus Tab allows you to do in Windows, but in Windows you would have to press Alt, press Tab, and then release Tab, and only then you switch to a previous window, versus that you switch instantly. Uh, this combination would give you Enter, which is so much more convenient than pressing Enter, you know, with a uh, traditional method by reaching with a pinky to that Enter button. And uh, pressing blue plus red plus that would give you control enter. Blue plus that button would close the window. So for example, if I open a new terminal and I want to close it, I press blue plus that. This is similar to doing uh, alt plus F4 in Windows to close current window. But uh, you know, alt plus F4, I mean F4, right? Where is it? There. And let's quickly go through blue plus red. So if the arrows are allocated on the blue layer, then control plus arrows that would allow you to move between words are allocated on this, uh, you know, gray layer that requires you to hold both of these buttons with your both fingers. A quick demo would be to input some of the words. And so instead of doing like uh, going through each symbol, you can go like that, move between words. Normally, you would do this by holding the control button and pressing the arrow buttons. But in my layout, you would press just the, both of these buttons with your thumbs. Uh, same with control enter, control plus, control backspace. So control backspace actually deletes one word and control delete deletes the word that is in front of in front of the cursor. These are just some basic functionality of a computer that you hopefully know. But with this keyboard layout, it is all allowed without like moving your fingers at all. You just stick in this position and you, you almost don't move your fingers. So moving on here, it's control A to select all the text, cut, paste, copy. Uh, this one is just opening the new tab. And as I've explained before, uh, pressing this combination, if you are already in the browser, would do the same thing. But if you don't want to move to browser, but you want to open the new tab in the application that supports uh, the tabs concept, you can press this combination over here and it will open a new tab no matter how many times you want. Uh, this one, ADDR, which stays for address, just focuses on the Omnibar. Uh, that works in a browser. That, of course, works in any other application that has Omnibar, for example, the file, file browser. Uh, this is page down. This is the, um, let me remember the concept, uh, scratch pad. So whenever I open in this uh, terminal, this is called the scratch pad, and I can open it from whenever I want. Can uh, you know do some Linux commands here while doing some other work. This button redirects to Control K, which usually is the way to insert a link when you are in the text editing field. This one goes to my notes application, and you can't see the second screen, but uh, I have the VimWiki always open on my second screen. And this key combination blue plus Y would always redirect me to the notes. So this is the blue layer on my keyboard, and I believe we haven't covered everything. So blue plus red would actually 
activate the gray layer, which is something there. So if you want to open the terminal underneath the current window in the current workspace, you would do that. The calculator, 2 plus 2, I don't know. <laughs> Why 2 plus H? This thing right here is called Vim Everywhere. If you're not familiar with Vim, you can just skip this part entirely, but basically it allows you to input text in any input field, but uh, using Vim as a separate terminal. So let me demonstrate you that. For example, you want to enter, uh, I don't know, you want to ask a question, ChatGPT a question. Normal thing, right? So you press magic buttons, and while ChatGPT is loading, you can already input some text, like what is, I don't know, coffee, and uh, this is actually a Vim terminal, so you can navigate and you can edit text like you would normally do in Vim. And when you're done, you just, you know, close the Vim everywhere and it takes the text that you have edited in Vim and it inserts this text into the input field. So you can already press enter and, you know, do your normal life. So basically, if I want to enter more than one word in the input field, I would almost always use Vim everywhere feature. Again, you press the magic button, you end the text, and whenever you're done, you just close this, this terminal window and it will paste the text here. So I think I covered all of the blue layer functionality and uh, what's for the red layer? If you hold the red button, then whatever button you press will just input the corresponding symbol here. And uh, I especially like the fact that I have the parentheses on the opposite sides uh, that lie under my index fingers. That's very convenient because it's very uh, often used in programming languages. Same for the plus button, equal button, and so forth. So for example, if you want to enter, if, I don't know, i does not equal to, uh, I don't know, zero, and like, look at this sequence of symbols, space, plus, equal, space, zero, parenthesis, space, and then the curly brace. All of this is being typed without releasing the red button. So again, let me do this again. If i I'm holding the red button right now with my thumb, okay? And I'm pressing space, and I'm pressing HN, which corresponds to plus equals, and I'm pressing space again without removing my thumb from the red button, and I'm pressing zero because this corresponds to zero in red. Uh, since zero and one are the most popular uh, numbers in programming, then I decided to put it on the red layer so that I never have to reach for the number row unless I really need some numbers that are different from zero and one. That's very convenient when you program like 10 hours a day. So what things we haven't covered? Ah, emoji, emoji. So uh, I have this layer too, and I can input emoji straight from my keyboard. And these are mnemonic based, for example, F, which corresponds to facepalm right here. Let's actually open the Vim configuration and you'll see the allocation of the emoji symbols on my keyboard. So here we go. This is the Vim config. Uh, it's not mnemonic based anymore, it's efficiency based. But let's go to emoji. Um, so W stays for wink, L stays for flame, plus minus or some other symbols that I may use in math notation. All right, I think I have most of the things covered. I haven't even started to talk about them. That's a whole separate topic and I can talk about it like hours and hours. But if you have any questions regarding my keyboard layout or the functionality, uh, or the methods that I used to achieve that functionality, then you can leave a comment and I will be more than happy to answer it. 